we can finally create consistent characters inside of Midjourney, and it's super easy. This has huge implications for the filmmaking industry, so let's hop in. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is hop over to Discord into Midjourney. I always recommend running your own Midjourney server as opposed to running on the public Midjourney server because stuff just gets lost. So what you're going to need is an image of your subject. So in our instance, I have a photo here of this woman in a dress. This woman was generated inside of Midjourney. It's from the internet. You can, of course, use a link from the internet as well. So I will go ahead and drag and drop this image into Discord. Go ahead and click enter and it will put in your image. Now all you have to do is click in here, click open in browser and copy the URL of the image. So now we're back inside of Midjourney and I will say forward slash imagine and now you type in your prompt. In our case, I'll say a cinematic still of a woman wearing a high necked white dress with white earrings and brown hair in a modern romantic comedy with light leaks shot on film. Now, you don't have to go into that much detail whenever you are writing your description for your subject, but the more detail you add in, the more consistent this tool will be. So now you need to add in your reference photo. And in order to do that, you'll do dash dash C R E F space, and then paste in your link. After that, go ahead and hit space and type in dash dash CW. CW stands for character weight. And in mid journey, it's on a scale. It can go from zero to 100. Zero being that there's a lot more creativity. The subject's hair can change, the clothes that they're wearing. It will be the same person, but a lot of the features might change. If you type in a value of 100, the character will basically be the same. So I'll just go ahead and do dash dash CW space. And in this instance, I'm going to do 100 and go ahead and click enter. And just like that, we have an image cascade with four images that look basically the same with the same character. Now, of course, whenever we're working on any AI project, one of my favorite things to do is to iterate. So I will say that if you are working on a project like this, make sure that you go in to your prompt and do space dash dash R, then put a space. This is going to repeat your prompt and then you can type in a repeater code. I almost always do at least 10 to create 10 iterations of my prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and click enter and let's see our results. And after just a few seconds, we have a ton of images here and they fit the prompt and the character is consistent throughout. So obviously this has huge implications when you're working on really any project, not just film projects. Having the ability to have consistent characters is a huge advantage whenever you are looking to tell compelling stories. So let's change things up. So I want this character, but I want her to be wearing something else and just kind of stylistically look different. So I'm going to copy our exact prompt here and we will do forward slash imagine and paste in the previous prompt. But this time, instead of a character weight of 100, I'm going to say zero. And let's go ahead and see our results. Okay, let's take a look at the results. So in these results, you can see that generally we have the same character, but her dress has really changed from shot to shot. Whereas before the dress was pretty dang consistent from shot to shot. Now it's changed into a different style. And of course you would get even more styles if you removed the actual prompting that prompted for a specific outfit. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the prompt forward slash go to imagine and paste it in here. And in this instance, I'm just going to say a cinematic still of a woman in a modern romantic comedy with light leaks shot on film with a character weight of zero. So let's take a look at our result. So we see that we have uh, the woman here and she's wearing completely different clothes in each one of these shots. The style is a little bit different from shot to shot. In this one, she's wearing glasses and this one she's wearing a black dress so generally speaking whenever you turn down your character weight the character still will be a consistent character it's just their clothing and other details might change from shot to shot 
Now, I wanted to test this out with a photo of me, so let's go ahead and do that together. So here's this photo of me, and I'm wearing what is basically a sheep for a sweater, and uh, looking just as dorky as always, and let's go ahead and drag and drop the photo right here into Discord. And we dropped it in there, and I'll go ahead and click on it, click open in browser, copy the URL, hop back over to Discord, and now let's type in forward slash imagine. And now let's type in our prompt. So we'll say a pencil drawing of a man wearing a white sweater with a mustache in the style of a pencil drawing. So really reinforcing pencil drawing here. And we'll do dash dash C-R-E-F for character reference, paste in our URL. And now we will do dash dash CW for character weight. And instead of typing in 100, one thing you should note whenever you're using this feature is that whenever you use 100, some of the lighting style will be inherited from the reference photo. So for this one, because there's that lighting coming from one side of my face and it's kind of dark on one side, all of the generations might have that same shadowing, which isn't ideal if you want there to be more variety. So for this one, I'm going to say a character weight of 50. So hopefully we get a little bit more variety and let's see what we get. And let's take a look at the result here. So we have four different images and they kind of look like me. The haircut's a little different, but again, we didn't character weight of 100. So there's a little bit more room for interpretation. The mustache is far more majestic than my mustache, but I'd say generally speaking, it did a pretty good job. So obviously this tool has very big implications for the future of creativity and modeling. We'll continue to explore this feature and find new ways to implement it in a storytelling context. But of course, if you ever want to dive deeper into the process of learning AI storytelling, check out our courses over on Curious Refuge. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want even more tutorials hopping into these tools. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one.